Hey guys, Dr. Duffin Lee. Board certified laser dermatologist. Um, today's topic is uh, something which I should have talked about a long time ago. It's very popular. It's called PRP or platelet rich plasma, also known as the um, Hollywood vampire lift or vampire facelift. The reason being is that you actually take your own blood, spin it, get the platelets, and then um, apply it on your face. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is uh, I had a uh, a whole heap of patients last week um, who came in, a whole heap, I meant about a handful. But the one cause was basically worsening of melasma due to the trial of microneedling and PRP. So this brings me on to the topic of PRP, what it's used for, what is it used scientifically that's proven and what's not proven. So first of all, when it comes to proven uses of PRP, um, things like damaged joints, uh, articular surfaces, and in orthopedics, uh, PRP has actually been a robust studied method to actually help with that. But in the world of dermatology and skin, this is the latest consensus of 2018. And I'll read it out from the most recent journal publication. Despite increasing popularity of platelet-rich plasma, the quality of evidence supporting its use is poor due to the lack of consistency in um, preparation and application. And that, my friends, is absolutely true. So I'm going to talk about three topics and three topics only in regards to PRP. First of all, uh, its use in skin rejuvenation, including um, eye rejuvenation and overall skin quality. Number two, uh, in regards to uh, acne scarring, which I can comment on a lot. Uh, and number three, in regards to hair loss. So the first thing we're going to talk about is, does it work for uh, eye rejuvenation, eye bag rejuvenation, facial rejuvenation, and skin rejuvenation? The answer is that, once again, the journals show that um, the lack of evidence is poor. Reason being is that, uh, this is what we call upsizing, is that we don't use, usually use PRP as an injection alone. So uh, six years ago, I did a study. We had five of my staff um, actually have PRP. We did uh, the old fashioned injections around the eyes, took before and afters, um, and we did three injections followed up um, three months apart. So basically, sorry, one month apart. And three months later, we actually took took the photographs of all uh, the patients and we had um, no response. So that was many years ago using a very old technique, um, but also using an old system. We didn't have that concentration. Nowadays, obviously, we know things have progress. So does it work? Um, the answer is still unknown, right? So if you look at eye rejuvenation, um, there's a lot of, I guess, clinics out there injecting uh, microneedling, for example, or laser resurfacing uh, and say, let's combine it with PRP. What's the logic in that? Well, um, <laughs> there is no logic. The, the logic is that if, if one is microneedling, you're basically causing a breach of your uh, skin uh, and in most cases, a breach of the dermis. So when we talk about cases like melasma and skin pigmentation, you can actually worsen it. Why? It's basically you've got pigmentation which lies on the top of the skin. You've actually microneedled it down. So you've got pigment drop out from the top to the bottom. So you've tr basically transferred an epidermal or basically a very thin layer of, of, of pigmentation to pigmentation which lies here. And not only that, if the purity of your PRP is not 100% pure, which most of it isn't because there's seven to 10% of its blood cells, you're actually transferring iron uh, from your red blood cells that goes through your epidermis because of your microneedling down into your dermis, causing uh, skin pigmentation and melasma worse. So guys, please don't do it uh, because there are scientific methods to treat melasma and pigmentation which actually work, uh, including creams, tyrosinase inhibitors, and lasers. Microneedling together with PRP, uh, yes, you should trial it, but I tell you this, do not do it. If you're a patient and you're offered this treatment for eye rejuvenation, you've got melasma, please don't do it because chances are it's going to make your melasma worse. And then you have to end up um, doing another course of lasers or another treatment for your melasma. Lots of other ways to treat uh, skin pigmentation. So can it actually help with um, aging, aging skin? 
The answer is that we still don't know. Um, we know it actually speeds up recovery. That's, that's known. It actually decreases redness. That's known. But does it actually increase the quality of your collagen? The answer is we don't know. The reason being is that everyone combines treatments. You use microneedling and some people even use CO2. And CO2, carbon dioxide laser resurfacing, um, in a fractional mode just doesn't make sense. The reason is, watch this. What happens with my CO2 is that you leave this plug of coagulation. So in other words, you leave this actual um, uh, plug on top of what you've, you've lasered. So when I use PRP with um, CO2, I actually wash away or wipe away the char or the plug from the CO2 and actually allow that to seep in. Most people don't. In fact, um, you know, watching videos, I think about 95% of people just actually uh, smother it on. Um, the other thing as well is that you're using a very tiny amount of PRP and, in the, and you're extracting it and it's going to waste. So that's why I prefer the PRP mask because you're actually soaking it. Now, the concentration, that is a big debate. So we call it um, the 2X or the 5X or the 6X, which means a multiplication of your physiological uh, platelet concentration. The sweet spot, people think, is between five to seven. So a lot of people use it between five to seven times. But in most cases, um, you would see uh, non-specialists, I guess some even specialists would actually use uh, two to three times the concentration, which may be wrong. But once again, there's no split face um, blinded studies to actually prove that PRP does work. But the actual method of which you're delivering the PRP, whether it be microneedling or lasering um, can actually work. So we don't know whether PRP is an add-on, what we call upsizing, and that should not be, I guess, if you go to a clinic, they should be upfront with you and go, look, you know, this is not proven in the literature, however, it can help heal up quicker. Which leads me on to the second topic of acne scarring. So you've seen me do a lot of PRP, and I still do it. I, I love it, I do, I do the treatment, of, but I'm upfront with the patient and say, look, you know, this has got no scientific evidence that it actually improves um, scarring, um, so it improves the actual outcome, but it definitely improves uh, wound healing. So in my situation where I have 20, uh, at least 20 or 25 patients traveling from interstate and overseas, I really do need to use a modality or method to actually get them to heal up as quickly as possible because most of the, my um, Overseas patients are here for two to three weeks and I've got to actually squeeze in two or three treatments to actually make that difference, especially for acne scarring. So this is when I actually use PRP is because um, when I use a, um, for example, um, RF microneedling combined with CO2 combined with subcision, I want them to heal up in the quickest possible time. So I don't want them to heal up in 10 days or even one week. Um, believe it or not, if you use PRP in a specific manner, you can actually uh, um, have a healing time of only three days. So in on a Friday, back to work if you're working on a Monday or um, basically almost healed up um, on, on a Monday. And that's using pretty high parameters, uh, both with the infamy as well as fractional CO2 lasing. So um, this is where I think it actually shines. Um, I've tried many methods in the past, including um, injecting into the scar with subcision. And truthfully, um, I don't see that it's a better result compared to, for example, saline injections. It just acts as a buffer so that the bonds don't actually reform when you are doing procedures such as um, no core subcision or you're actually subsizing with a cannula. So that's what I call um, the under technique is where I actually inject PRP under. So my method when I treat acne scars is usually the over and under technique. So over is when I actually uh, use sprinkle it over and I use that immediately after created uh, wounding or dermal wounding. So the PRP actually sinks in. And then I use a mask. The reason being is that occlusion of the PRP. So imagine um, there's so much PRP there that, that if you actually saturate it with a mask, um, it just makes sense because instead of actually having just a you know a couple of droplets in that area you're actually soaking your your face in your own um, growth factors and the reason the logic behind that is that prp or platelets contain growth factors and growth factors should stimulate first of all a quicker healing time 
but also in theory, it should stimulate more collagen. And you stimulate more collagen, more elastin, you get a better scar remodeling and um, a better outcome. That's all in theory and truthfully, guys, I've seen it, I've done it, and I can't put my hand on my heart and say, look, you know, PRP is making that difference because um, it's not. But why do I use it? Like I said, um, there is no doubt about it. You heal a lot quicker with PRP compared to using other forms, for example, soft paraffin or whatever. Okay, guys, I'm going on too much about acne scarring. Let's move on to the last topic, which is hair loss. Everyone suffers from it, uh, and the sooner or later, it's going to be brought up. So I'll do a topic specifically on how to treat hair loss, but when I'm covering PRP, it's this. It is adjunctive treatment. It's not the treatment, and you have to continue with it. So, I, do I endorse it? Uh, the answer is this. First of all, you've got to know what you're doing. You've got to know where to inject it, right? So you've got to be a hair, either a dermatologist or a hair expert, all right? Because um, there's so many different patterns of hair loss. You can have uh, basically the Norwood scale all the way from one, and within that one, you can have that two and two, two, two A, and then uh, three, three vertex all the way up to Norwood five, six, and seven. So you gotta understand where you're actually balding because it's actually prevention. So you can't just inject it in your whole scalp or inject it by, you know, by temporarily where the balding is. You've got to actually predict where your, uh, where your thinning is and then the specialist has got to actually inject it in those areas and not in your, um, in your whole scalp. It just does not make sense. So you gotta understand your Norwood scale um, and if you're female, you've got to understand your um, Ludwig scale of um, hair loss. Once you understand those scales and you can assess the patient, sure, that's adjunctive treatment. In other words, it's not the sole treatment for hair loss because the number one treatment is basically medical. So if you are male, we're looking at things like minoxidil, for example, um, either orally um, or topically. Um, so basically, minoxidil, which is um, drops Rogaine, yeah? And then we need a DHT inhibitor. And you can have a finasteride, which has been with us for the last 20 years, or duesteride. So these are proven uh, ways medically to decrease uh, hair loss in males. For females, um, this minoxidil taken orally, or you can use, uh, for example, a minoxidil topically, plus um, anti-androgens. So you may be looking at things like spironolactone and cyprotone acetate. So these are all medical treatments and they are first line treatment. You should never, ever, ever, ever get PRP without getting medically assessed first and knowing what kind of scale of your hair loss is. What's the interval? Is it a one-off? No, it's not. It's basically the guidelines this. The consensus is that you do need at least three to four treatments to begin with for the first year. And it's usually spaced between six to eight weeks apart. Um, do I do it? Yes, I do. But once again, medical first and then PRP. So six to eight weeks apart, three to four treatments, and then um, your subsequent year, it's basically two treatments uh, every year, and that's for life. So it's not a one-off treatment, um, and it's scientifically shown it can actually help uh, actually you know, make your hair more robust, uh, and if you have thinning hair, make it thicker, fuller, and um, um, you get better coverage. But once again, that's adjunctive treatment. It's an add-on, it's not the sole treatment. So just be careful of clinics out there, guys, who actually just do PRP for the sake of hair loss. Um, it should actually be a um, holistic management. So that's my take on PRP. I think we're still learning a lot from platelet-rich plasma, um, and I think a lot of studies do need to be done, when, especially when it comes to acne scarring, because. Uh, uh, do I believe that it actually increases um, the outcome? The answer is no, um, and that's I've been doing that for the last five years. Um, but I still use it day in day out because of the fact that it actually heals up a lot quicker. So that can be said for um, skin rejuvenation as well. And what you see with the positive effects may not be PRP. It's actually um, the primary procedure. In acne scarring, it's it's the subcision. It's the um, it's the uh, laser resurfacing or the microneedling. Uh, and with skin rejuvenation, it's exactly the same. It may be the laser that actually works, and the PRP is only there as an add-on. Uh, and I hate clinics who do that. Um, it, should be, it should be really ethical out there, guys. So 
Hope that helps you. Uh, and always question your practitioner when you ask, when they ask, what are you using PRP for? Uh, and hopefully this video will give you the answer. Guys, um, look, thanks for watching that. Yes, it's my ramble on PRP because yes, I was kind of peeved off with um, people um, going in for one treatment and it's actually worsened that treatment than coming to see me and I've got to actually undo all that. So uh, please, I'm not against clinics doing things, but where it's suited, do it. But um, yeah, um, please don't do it in all situations because we do need other equipment um, to treat specific skin conditions. Okay, guys, just keeping it real. Um, I'll see you next week, same time, uh, same place. Once again, thanks for watching this video. If you like it, a thumbs up, please comment. This is an interactive channel. Um, it's 200,000 now, so it's interactive. In other words, chime your thoughts in regards to PRP, what you think, what your concentration is. I've got lots of doctors watching this, so tell me your methods for PRP. I'm really interested to learn as well. Uh, and once again, I'll shout out Steve Weiner who taught me PRP with the concentrations um, and the sweet spot. So, um, numerous doctors, please chime your thoughts. Patients, um, aestheticians, everyone, just contribute. It Basically, we are, everyone learns from everyone, yeah? Okay, stay safe and um, please subscribe if you're new to this channel and if you like it. Bye for now.